everyone, I'm here for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 7, Episode 8. Yandy, I need to know how you said in one sentence you are not legally married to Mendeecees and then still call him your husband. I need to know that because when I got buried, I walked down the aisle. I signed my name. My husband signed his name. The pastor signed his name. It was sent off. It came back to our address to verify that, hey, we are legally married. You did not do that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be like, how dare you? Because I, I understand why the reason why you didn't send it off was like, hey, if I send this marriage certificate off, the government going to be coming after me for a crime that I didn't commit. Therefore, I didn't want to do that. But then at the same time, Yanny, you can't say that your finances had nothing to do with not wanting to marry Mandisi when you just said that was a reason and why because you didn't want them to come after your money. It's like, Yanny, she kills me with this. She's like, she's using this wife card to justify her actions as well. Since I am Mendeecee's wife, I can take little Mendeecee's up to see his daddy, whether his mama wants him to or not. She's justifying this with being his wife when you were not the wife. And then she's going on, I worked hard. I am one hit away from being a billionaire. Now, I was like, maybe she said millionaire, so I had to rewind that. No, it said billionaire. Like, what other artist besides Bianca does Yandy have to where she's one hit away from being a billionaire? And I am not trying to be shady. I'm not trying to be funny because the artists that I've known Yandy to have was Jim Jones. That was back in the day. She has Bianca now. And she had one of the girls from BBOW like last season for two months. So, how is she one hit away from being a billionaire and I'm like I had to crack up because she was like she was contradicting herself she's sitting there talking about something I didn't want the government to come in my pocket for a crime I didn't commit well this is the man you chose to be with and marry you knew he was out there doing dirty it wasn't like the night before your wedding you found out that Mandisa was in trouble Mandisa had already went to jail for like a year when y'all was together but before you had the little girl Talk about my finances had nothing to do with it, but in also saying that I did it because of my finances. I'm like, really? I have another question. How is it that Kim Bella is a main character on this show and people who are not have a better storyline than her? Eric and Samantha have a better storyline than her. Judy has a better storyline than her. She even Kim had a better storyline than her. We won't even bring this even further on. Jay Adrian has a storyline better than Kim Bella. Shoot, even homegirl that doggone Jay Adrian thought Snoop was getting with has a better storyline than Kim Bella. Can somebody explain to me how you were a main character on the show and you have no storyline, but people who aren't have one? Can somebody explain these things to me? So Carly B and Mariah Lynn meet up and Mariah Lynn tells her what went down. And Carly, she just breaks it down like this. Look here, both y'all my homegirls. You was being messy. She's in her feelings. I'm going to need y'all to get this together. I'm not taking sides, so don't even ask me. That's what I got from that conversation. Like, you was being messy. She was being in her feelings. Y'all need to get this together because I'm, I'm tired. I'm out here working. I ain't got time for this. And then Mariah Lynn gets like a call from her sister talking about some come pick up my baby. Well, hold up. Like, what is your sister doing that she needs you to come get her baby? I can see if she was working and her boss was like, look here, I need you to stay an extra hour. Daycare is over at 5.30. I'm not going to get off until 6. Can you come get my baby? But, like, the way she's saying it's like the sister and her nephew live with her rent-free. She's taking care of them. And then the sister likes to get in her feelings and want to fight somebody. I'm sitting there like, girl, you are better than me. Ain't no way in the world that a grown person and their baby going to be staying with me and I'm providing you shelter and food and you gonna try to fight me uh -uh, I ain't going down like that like where the mama at like last time we seen her mom her mom was pregnant and in and out of jail I guess she feel that's not a safe environment for her sister but her sister like you being a little bit ungrateful you have a roof over your head you were being fed and you acting like this child couldn't have been me so yeah you just gonna sit on the phone and lie to Mandisi's about calling his and Erica's baby a break baby okay I, I I want somebody to dog on get some footage of this and if they don't have, you know, cable in the prison that he's at so he can watch what's going on so he can see for himself how you've been cutting up. Because you sat there on the phone it's like, I would never do that. Because he's like, I talked to Erica on the phone and she said you called our son a break baby. She's like, you know, I would never, I have never said that to you. Never said that to you. Not, I never said it. Never said it to you. 
But which is worse, it's like you told Erica that Mendeecees wished he never had a baby with Erica. That's saying he wished that he never had the baby, period. Because if he didn't have a scene with Erica, a scene wouldn't be here. And then we find out that me and Dixie didn't even know that Yandy hadn't sent off the marriage certificate. Like, you lying to your husband, too. But she's like, you know what the deal was. It's like, I've been here for seven months. That case has been closed. You could have been sent it all. It's like, what's your excuse now? It's about the money, right? I thought you loved me. He didn't say that. But that's what I was kind of getting from. And I was like, ooh. Mendes ain't no. I thought this was something y'all discussed amongst each other. But apparently you out there lying to him as well. So my favorite couple, Remy and Papoose, they meet up and they having a picnic in the park. And she's making sure the whole area that they are in is debugged. Like, girl, you are outside. There's going to be some bugs. But I feel on that one. I do not want to be sitting there eating my food with bugs around. That's why I don't like eating outside at all. Anyways... She's you now trying to butter him up because she wants her husband back. And she wants, you know, to bring somebody else in to help him manage. You know, he's managing her. He's trying to manage their kids. And he's part-time wanting to get back with his music. But she's like, this is a lot on you. You managing me and the children. And I see these lyrics on your phone. Like, what's good? But all I see here is, I'm fired. I don't want you to manage me no more. But she's like, I want my husband back. You know, I want us to spend time together like this. Like, we don't have time for just us. If you're managing me, the kids, and trying to wrap yourself. So, I'll tell you, I love Remy and Papoose together. They are like the perfect couple. I can't even say perfect, but like they chemistry. Like, she loves him. He loves her. He's like ready to just do everything. She, he just want this baby right now. But I guess like if you kind of pull back. And maybe y'all can't have this baby, but she's too busy right now. Because, you know, she, she's not saying she don't want kids. She just don't want them right now because she's too busy. Because she don't want to just have the kids and just have somebody else raise them. She wants to do that. So, hopefully they can come to some compromise. And they can keep on working and have some babies and be happy. So, Erica decides to contact the lawyer to see her rights about Yandy changing locks on the door. And the lawyer just better her know, you had the right to change those locks right back. Yandy, she had no right to change them. Even if Mendeecees was out of jail, he couldn't change them. I'm like, thank you, Lily. We're finally getting that. Like, I already knew that Yandy just can't change locks. Like, if my name is on a property, you have to go through evictions and, like, go down to the court get an eviction notice, had them come out and summons me. You can't just, oh, I'm mad at you, I'm changing the locks. No, because I can come back and sue your tail. And I think you, it's like triple a kid. I work, you, know, I, you know, I'm always saying I'm watching judge matches, so I'll be getting up on some legal advice. If somebody illegally evicts you, you can get treble damages. That's three months worth of rent. So, y'all people be out there. Be careful. You get mad at somebody and want to evict them. Make sure you do it legally. But then the Lord's like, they was telling her, yeah, Yanny's always talking about being a wife and she can do this, that, and the third. But the Lord's like, I don't even think they married. I did some digging. And I could not find an actual marriage, you know, the records have then been married, so you know they was happy. Like, ooh, wait till I get to her and tell her, girl, you ain't even married to me in D.C. You just a baby mama just like the rest of them. You know they was happy. I was like, but he's in jail. Why are we happy about this? Like, Yandy doesn't have him right now. She's not going to have him for some years. Yes, they are still together, but why are we happy again? So the creep squad meet up and they had to, you know, go grab Peter from you, know, running back and forth from Tara and Amina, getting him pregnant back and forth. Like, who am I going to get pregnant next? Well, I can't get Amina pregnant right now because she just, you know, she's pregnant. Maybe I can go over here and get Tara pregnant. So he's, he's mad and justifiably so because apparently Cisco out here been trying to cost everybody money. He done already went behind DJ Smiles a lot back and tried to get with Mariah Lynn and they fighting over that but I'm like why are we fighting over Mariah Lynn? Now if this was Remy Ma, yes we would be fighting because this is money to be made. Mariah Lynn not so much. But then he went behind Peter's back and told some you know some um promoters 
I don't think you should be working with Peter Guns. Peter Guns did that. Like, don't work with Peter Guns. And, like, cost Peter money, but then didn't go get the money himself. Just be like, yes, I didn't even take the money, but I did cost it from you. I'm like, Cisco, you low down. Like, I'm I'm with Peter. I'll be bad too. You can cost me $10,000. I got 19 million kids out here, and I'm getting people pregnant every other year. Getting these women pregnant back and back. And you got her costing me $10,000. You know I got Infamil to buy. You know I got strollers to buy. You know I got doggone got to take care of all these kids. So I'm with Peter on that one. You messing with my money now. But come to find out, Cisco, you mad because they didn't go, let you come in on that restaurant business? Like, really? This will be mad about? I need to know how Peter had money to go in on a restaurant. I was already just like, how rich have money to go in on a restaurant? Because I haven't seen him with an artist since Olivia. Peter, you was like going back and forth from Tyron and Mina's house. So how did you have money to go on a restaurant? But like, you mad because they didn't come to you? Like, hey, Cisco, why don't you come in on us in the restaurant? I'm like, we, you mad because of that? They didn't consult you about coming in on a restaurant? Like, really? Then he getting all buck with Peter. Like, yeah, I did not do it again. I was mad because you was working with him. He's like, I ain't got nothing to do with me. You should be mad at him. Then I'm like, so Cisco, he said, bro, I ain't got 10000 I got five. So you mean to tell me that you were walking around with $5,000 in your pocket, which you went to right before y'all got this scene together, you went around and maxed out your cars, went to the ATM to get $5,000 just so you can have it for this scene? Really? This is what we're doing? Even in New York, you're doing this? I'm not saying that New York people is like that, but you, this is anywhere. You on the streets and you just walking around with $5,000. Don't even have it in the... No, really? Y'all still out here doing fireworks? I'm sorry if y'all heard them fireworks. These people, they have been doing fireworks for the past month. I can see you doing them on New Year's Eve when it... Well, not even New Year's Eve, when it stroke... When the clock struck 12 at, at midnight on New Year's Day, I can see that. Well, we are in... January 2nd at 827 at night. Why are we doing fireworks? We are in the city limits. You shouldn't be doing them. Back to my review. But you walking around here with $5,000 in your pocket. Now I know one of them had to give him that money. Because ain't nowhere in the world you was just walking around with $5,000 in your pocket. Because what do you do? You did get Mariah Lynn as a, as a, um, as a client. Don't know really what you do outside of being on Love and Hip Hop. So would you go tomorrow like, Mona, can I get like $5,000? Or just give me like $200 and I can wrap it in some fake money to act like I'm doing this? Because that's the only way I can see that happening. What else happened? Jay Adrian, she went to Chicago, got her mind right, came back to Snoop. She wanted to help Snoop out. So she was with, what's her name? That girl was feeding Snoop strawberries. They didn't, she didn't contact her so she can be on Snoop's gorgeous gangster label. And she's trying to get back with Snoop. So, yeah, that was the gist that went on. I am mad at Yandy and her ways of I'm the wife so I can do this. I am mad at Cisco. I'm like, you cost some people money. You mad because of this? Like, really? We doing this? I didn't mention, oh yeah, last week I messed up the name in Mariah's Let's Get Physical. It was not Suzanne Summers. It was a little Newton-John. I had been watching Step by Step on reruns or earlier and that was in my mind. It wasn't Step by Step. What was it, what was it called? What is that? When, it's not Step by Step. It's, oh. When she was with, it was two girls and a dude. They was friends, but that show, I can't think of it right now, Three's Company. I was watching that, and it was stuck on my mind, Suzanne Summers. So it wasn't Suzanne Summers. It was Olivia Newton-John with, let's get physical, physical. And I need to know, last week, why didn't somebody tell Mariah Lynn not to wear that outfit when she was rehearsing? Like, I felt uncomfortable. Like, Mariah Lynn has... She she's very skinny, so the clothes that she was wearing did not look right, and I felt uncomfortable watching. I'm like, she looks like a child. Why are you wearing this? Like you're a grown woman. Like I know this theme is okay. We just gonna be sexy on here, but we can be sexy and like and have clothes on. Like why is Bianca always running around in a bikini top? Like what do we not have clothes? Why are we? <sighs> 
Anyways, that was just a review. If I left anything out by all means, leave a comment or video response. And like I always want to thank my subscribers and the people who watch my videos. I want you to like this video, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and here on YouTube. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.